No one has really talked about the Detroit Pistons since they drafted Cade Cunningham. While there are many reasons for this, with a healthy franchise centerpiece returning and a new top dollar head coach, I think that this team is in a great position for a huge leap. Today I will be examining the Pistons offseason moves as well as the position that they find themselves in. Starting off with the $80 million man Monty Williams, while he has his flaws, the Pistons picked up one of the best coaches on the market who does have finals experience, and while he isn't necessarily young, being almost 15 years younger than Dwayne Casey with a whole ton of experience is definitely a plus. While the largest coaching contract in the history of the NBA is a bit excessive, it was likely necessary considering not only that the Pistons will take a few years, while I think they'll take a step this season, they won't be true contenders for at least two to three more years. And listen, I mean no disrespect, but Detroit just subjectively is not as attractive as some of the warmer cities in the NBA. While unfortunately Monty's relationship with Cam Johnson will not result in him being in a Pistons uniform, due to the Brooklyn Nets having restricted free agent rights, and listen, I know Cam just re-signed with the Nets for 4108, but what that tells me is that they were matching any and every offer that came to their desk. But no, honestly, I don't know how on board I am with paying Cam Johnson $27 million a year. I think he's a great player, but, you know, that could be a bit excessive. But that's a story for another time. Regardless if you turn into the Detroit Suns or not, Monty Williams was an outstanding hire to shift the culture of this basketball team. Next up, I want to discuss Cade real quick because, I don't know, man. I, I mean, listen, I understand, you know, NBA moves fast. Guy goes down in his second year. People forget, stop talking about him. But this guy, so, like, I don't know, man, at least in my eyes, absolutely has the potential to be the guy and is, you know, I mean, has the potential to be, you know, a top 10 player in our league. And again, I know patience has been completely and totally lost in the modern NBA, but don't be surprised when Cade is an all-star next season, or at least, you know, very close to it. Now for the actual roster movement that we have seen in this offseason. The first move I want to discuss may confuse you, but I actually really, really, really love the Joe Harris trade for Detroit. While you might be scratching your head at why I love the Pistons trading for a shooter who averages 8 points right now, who is making $20 million next season, please let me explain. New CBA rules require teams to spend at least 90% of the salary cap, and this obviously impacts young teams with their centerpieces on rookie deals much more than it does, you know, contending teams. For this reason, you know, you see the Pacers going out and paying Bruce Brown 245. You see Houston going out and paying Dylan Brooks 480 and Fred Van Vliet 3. 130 but the Pistons took a different approach to use their cap space which I really really do like and this was just taking on a less favorable expiring contract from the Brooklyn Nets as we know now there was no way the Pistons were ever getting Cam Johnson again the Nets would have matched any offer that came across their desk so again if you were mad and you wanted Cam Johnson I guess I kind of understand that but had you not traded for Joe Harris you wouldn't have gone out and overpaid Cam Johnson but you would have gone out and overpaid someone else you know, again, that could have been a two-year deal and not been too bad or something like the Bruce Brown, but you also could have been, in, and again, I, I mean, I don't think the Dylan Brooks contract is, like, awful, awful. Obviously, if he, you know, I mean, is, is a complete negative on offense, it will be, but they could have found themselves in a situation like that where you're giving out a four-year pretty lucrative deal to a guy that might not deserve all that money. But another thing with them not going out and overpaying a huge free agent is that they won't have to give some random huge free agent touches because they paid him a ton of money. This will allow for Cade, Ivy, and Oswar Thompson to develop much better. And because they were taking on this unfavorable contract, the Pistons also got two second round picks in the deal. And listen, while Joe Harris is obviously nowhere near worth $20 million, he's a career 44% three-point shooter and will be a great movement shooting bench piece for this young Detroit squad. And hey, maybe you can re-sign him at a cheaper clip at the end of the season if he does like his time in Detroit. Next move that Detroit made was trading for Monte Morris, and I absolutely loved, loved this move. With Cade being a point forward of sorts and having an exciting young guard in Jaden Ivey, I understand not wanting to go out and get a major guard in free agency or via trade, and I think Monte Morris will provide the Pistons with exactly what they are looking for in supplemental ball handling play. But man, they got this guy for a single second round pick. Which, as a Philly fan, I know I do this every video, but it's actually applicable every video. I was, I mean, listen, Harden's coming back now, at least we think. I mean, who knows? I mean, I, again, like, right, it, it looks more, you know, we have the Instagram posts and blah, blah, blah. It looks more like Harden's coming back. But when this happened, it was, you know, Harden was gone. And, man, I was fuming at the Sixers not going out and getting Monte Morris. I just wanted to say that to show y'all how much I do believe in this guy. He will be an outstanding supplemental playmaker and shooter for this young Detroit squad and keeps the Pistons from going out and having to overpay a guard. <coughs> Fred Van Vliet. 
<laughs> the final piece of the Pistons offseason I will be diving into today will be their selection of Osar Thompson with the fifth overall pick. While I know Detroit fans were upset after falling all the way to five despite being bottom three in the NBA, listen, I mean, I listen, man, I, I'd be really upset too. I'm not going to lie. I know y'all wanted Wemby or Scoot or some of y'all didn't want Scoot because of Ivy and blah, 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 blah. But I think Osar will be great for this team. He is another wing with guard-like offensive skills like Cade, and he is also a tenacious defender. His defense will allow him to have an impact early on, and the playmakers around him will elevate his offensive game. The Pistons' core of Cade, Ivy, Thompson, and Jalen Duren, all being 19 to 21 years old, is not fun to think about as a fan of a different Eastern Conference team. By the way, even though he won't get a segment, I think Jalen Duren has all the tools to be the exact elite interior defensive big these young guards need. As for the rest of the Pistons roster, I really love the movement shooting present in Bojan Bogdanovic, Joe Harris, and Alec Burks. The big logjam of Duren, Stewart, Bagley, and Wiseman is very interesting to me. I think they will inevitably have to trim this down, and the only person who is 100% safe here is Jalen Duren. With Beef Sue adding a jumper to his game, I think he's the best candidate to stay here, but who knows, maybe we see a breakout season from Marvin Bagley or James Wiseman. Both Stewart and Wiseman will be free agents next summer, so if we don't see before them, we will definitely see a year from now. The only thing I think this roster could really use would be one or two more bigger, versatile wing defenders. While I love Bojan, I also think that the Pistons would be better off with a bigger veteran 3 and D wing at the 4 spot alongside Cade, Jaden, Oswar, and Jalen. As for a guy like Killian Hayes, I really have no clue where he fits here, especially after the Monte Morris move. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and talk like I watched 82 All Pistons games since he's been drafted. But from what I can gather, this guy, this guy's garbage, man. I'm sorry. Killian Hayes believers, listen, I, if y'all still exist, talk to me in the comments and what y'all see in this guy. Because, you know what I mean? I, I honestly, you know what? Part of it is definitely me being biased because I took his over when he was playing in France. Thinking that, well, I mean, I think the line was like 11 and a half or something. But, you know, he's playing in his home country. Surely he'll score more than four points, right? 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 Listen, I understood giving him last year that was, you know, obviously going to be a tanking year. And especially after Cade went down. You know, being a number seven pick, I understand you want to give him some time. But in all honesty, I mean, again, I, like I said, I understand them giving him this year. But, uh, yeah, because they were tanking. But I think that's all Killian Hayes is really good for in this league tanking and also selecting Marcus Sasser with the 25th overall pick also tells me all I need to know about Killian Hayes future to end on a more positive note I really like what Troy Weaver and the Detroit Pistons have been building these past three years and it's finally time for them to really start to compete the Pistons have a great blend of young potential and veteran role players that will result in some real excitement in the Motor City this season I really do like the supporting cast around their young stars. I really do think that all this Pistons team really needs is time. I mean, you know, again, like, right, like going out and overpaying a guy now probably wouldn't have been the best idea. I think they're better off, you know, just developing from here on out. I think they should be a solid team next year. You know, I think they should definitely be in play in contention next year, considering Cade, you know, makes the leap that I expect him to. Jaden Ivey leap, Jalen Duran. Again, man, y'all have so many, so many young guys, and your time is definitely definitely coming here i mean sometime soon man i mean you know again i think they'll be playing contenders this year i think 100 percent should be a playoff team next year and then it's up and up from there i mean who you know i mean sky's really the limit from there but that's gonna wrap this one up if y'all enjoyed it please like it up sub to the channel turn on those post noties i would really really appreciate it helps me out a ton comment video ideas down below you know i mean if i haven't done your team you know comment that down below maybe i have go check the channel real quick but even like like any other videos, you know what I mean? Like even if it's not, you know, just directly related to a team, it's a player, it's a coach, you know what I mean? Like anything, just like predictions. I don't know, man. Like like y'all let me know. You know, we're, we're starting to build something here. So uh, again, I appreciate y'all. Y'all can like, sub, noti. Appreciate it. I always say it twice. I don't know why. I like every, I always say it twice. I always say it twice, but man, appreciate all y'all. Catch y'all on the next one. Peace.